with us, <laughs> uh, Dr. Yogesh Chandra, who is uh, uh, connected with our uh, ministry here in India, uh, <clears throat> ISKCON Bhagavad Ministry. Mm, one simple question, why is Varnashram, or is it actually important? And if so, why is it important for our ISKCON society? Varnashram is a system which is important not only for ISKCON, okay. but for the whole society. Right. As far as ISKCON is concerned, it itself is a society and therefore Varnashram is important for ISKCON also. Mm -hmm. Because ISKCON is not some cult which is separate from the society. It is a mainstream practice which is supposed to be incorporated throughout the whole society. So you cannot separate the society itself from ISKCON. And when we talk about a society, there always has to be a structure which is very logical, in which every person of that society feels the purpose of life, his life is solved. And we know that we have two purposes in this life. When Lord Krishna created this universe, he had two purposes behind it. One was to help every soul satisfy whatever demands, whatever needs, whatever desires he had. And secondly, to allow that soul to also attain that desire to come back to him and that to create that possible path by which he can come back. And when these two paths are together, that is the original Vedic system. In the Vedic system, you have the individual who is able to fulfill all his desires and at the end of his life, he is able to go back to Godhead in one life. That is the beauty of the Vedic system. And this is what is the basis of Sanatan Dharma, which is the basis of ISKCON. Therefore, in ISKCON, every devotee who comes to ISKCON, he has two things. No person who comes to ISKCON, or I would say maybe a minuscule number would be those who are Paramhansas who come to ISKCON directly. Every person who comes, has comes with some set of desires, which he also would like to fulfill on before he leaves this world. And at the same time, his overriding desire is to go back to Godhead. So this desire, fulfillment, and the, how it is to be done is as per the Varnashram. Because every person, normally if we see every, the whole society is divided into at least four kinds of people. You have the people at, who are the main, the teachers, then you have the administrators, then you have the businessmen, and then you have the other people who are the artisans and the helpers. So these four, these classes are there whether a person has heard the word Varnashram or not. This is a fundamental aspect of society and which does not go away even if we try to wish it away. It does not go. Whether you have communism, whether you have socialism or any kind of political uh, setup in a country, these four classes remain. You may not give them any names, but they remain. So this Every individual has got a certain aptitude which he needs to utilize and ideally in the service of Krishna so that whatever desires that he has, he wants to fulfill by using these aptitudes, they get doted, they get converted into devotional service and at the end, this all this is counted as devotional service and he reaches Krishna. So this understanding of Varnashram that there are four basic Varnas, Brahmana, Kshatriya, Vaishya and Shudra this understanding is very important even for ISKCON. We cannot simply say that all the devotees are like one. That kind of it, it that kind of mono uh, monotony is cannot be artificially imposed because every person is different. Every person naturally belongs to one of these varnas, and ideally he should be given. Not ideally, but he has to be given a service which is in tune with this Varna, then and then alone he can be happy, then he is able to fulfill his own internal desires. Otherwise you are trying to put a square peg in a round hole which does not work, which is a disaster, which is not good either for the per person or for the society. So this understanding is very important that we are not labeling people, we are simply categorizing them as per their own aptitudes. We are not artificially separating them on the basis of their so-called 
birth to a certain father or a certain family or a certain um, caste. We are totally against the caste system. Varnashram and caste system are two opposite things and they should not be equated at any cost. Caste system means I am a Brahmana because my father was a Brahmana. Whereas the fact remains that I may be a Kshatriya, Vaishya or a Shudra also if, even if my father is Brahmana. This is what the Vedic system is saying. Vedic system is based on the person's qualities and not on the basis of his birth in a family. So when we want that a person should follow his own, uh, whatever his aptitude is, we have to go as per the Varnic understanding. And if we are able to do this, we'll have a society of very happy people who are doing what they want to do best and they are utilizing that service in the service of Krishna. So they are fulfilling all their desires and at the same time going back to God. That I think is the perfection of life. Thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, just one thing. What, to what extent? You know, actually, I, I, it's you know it's a, we can just discuss okay, okay. directly like that. Um, to what extent is Varnashram possible to implement in its full range in urb, in urban cities, in our cities, modern cities of today? Yes. Yeah. I, I have been hearing it very often that Varnashram can be practiced only or ideally only in the rural setup. But I beg to differ. I feel Varnashram is too fundamental a thing to be restricted to villages. I feel that everywhere and everywhere it should be implemented. Surely you may be able to implement it verbatim to the T, maybe in the rural. But that does not by any way discount it from being implemented in the rural, in the urban setup. Every person, those people who are uh, living in the uh, cities, they also are of four categories. There also you have Brahmanas, there also you have Kshatriyas, there also you have Shudras, everything is, all the Varnas are there. What is important is understanding. The devotee should know what is his Varna and he should be, from a young age, he should be allowed to follow that particular path of that particular Varna. That allows him to become happy. Otherwise, simply we see that today even in the cities, children are simply following some profession only because their parents told them to. Or they feel that a certain profession may allow them to earn more money. <coughs> yeah. So different, different reasons are there for, for getting into a certain profession. But at the end of it, there is only frustration. Unless a person yeah. follows what he is best made for, what is his own internal urge and his capacity if he is everything is in tune then he leads a very happy life and this is what i would call varnashram in the urban setup yeah so of course i think it can exist in both both uh, setups let's say urban and rural uh, at the same time we hear about uh, the Sevedi culture being primarily an agrarian culture where one lives in relation to land and producing one's food exactly. and like that. Because we have a, a very strong tendency, modern day society, of becoming more and more urbanized. Is that good? What is important here is that we should not combine these two different things. What What is, when you are talking about agrarian culture, what we are saying as the major profession of the Vaishyas, that was farming. Mm -hmm. That is the need of the hour as the world is going towards total ecological disaster right. we need to stop this kind of thing taking away the lands and giving it to industries <coughs> this is asking for disaster it is inviting disaster yeah. so what we require is gone as an ideal society it needs to show the world what an ideal world is like and that definitely is an agrarian based economy right. so these two things are have to be taken simultaneously Vedic culture was agrarian based. At the same time, there were different, a city would be at the center of different villages and yeah. in the city, there would be further economic growth and from there would be exchange because no, no village can be totally self-sufficient. Mm -hmm. You have certain level of self-sufficiency, but every village would have its own special flavor. It would have a certain speciality of goods that it could prepare, yeah. handloom goods, of course. 
or certain kinds of foods that it could be able to grow yes. and there would be exchange and all this would happen in the city right. so our vedic civilization includes a city in the center and villages all around yes. definitely the majority 70% or more would be of the population would be in the villages mm -hmm. and that's because more land is required there more work is required in the city a, a smaller portion and all the administrative uh, workers the kshatriyas they would be in the city the brahmanas yes. the major higher learning centers would be in the city you would have the lower the primary grade education in the villages for higher education people would come to cities mm -hmm. so that that help to uh, in resource management you have limited resources limited land you use the best you have limited very good teachers who cannot go to every village you can every village cannot produce the highest quality of teacher you would have basic education and then as we hear in the case of lord krishna also he had to go to sandipani muni who was at a particular place so the higher education would always be centralized somewhere around the city and in a rural setup of course not in a completely modern uh, mechanized setup but this is important than that since you bring the point of city i feel that people in the city these are the people who are most likely to enter into higher politics who are able to control who are able to uh, give a direction to the whole law system which is very important because unless we have good laws in place we cannot protect the lands of the villages yeah if we have wrong laws the lands of the it's it's only a matter of time where a certain laws are passed and the lands of the villages are taken away so we cannot totally ignore the aspect of the kshatriyas being in government and being able to guide the government into making better laws for a more sustainable future L laws that we have today in connection with land uh for example here in india uh how much are they in line with uh, the uh, tenets of vedic culture uh not very much i would say okay. uh, still till now even now certain laws are there which allow the government to take away fertile land and allow in a huge measure and allow industries to be built on that which i feel is totally wrong right. you should use you may use industrialization is important in a sense because as a country we cannot be isolated we need certain amount of uh, most important what we need is defense production if we are not industrialized we will not have the ability to protect ourselves from the other countries so industrialization is very important for the sake of protection of the country but otherwise most important thing is to make the citizens live a life which is closer to nature right. that is both healthy it is sustainable and it will be ecologically viable for the long term whereas if we simply start taking away lands and putting industries what we are going to get is eventually there will be nothing to eat what we are already seeing the food prices going up and somehow nobody makes the connection that there is fruit prices are going up because there is less production less production because less land is under cultivation mm -hmm. and every day this land is being taken away and more and more industries are being put up right. so this kind of uh, development is not to anybody's benefit <clears throat> and maybe one has the question maybe you can comment uh, why within let's say our iskon society uh varnashram is still so misunderstood there are certain people who feel that it is very important for iskon to always be very very so called politically correct in the sense that they feel that varnashram may be considered by some people to be equal to the caste system which is something which was known as the bane of the vedic civilization which it was not actually caste system was something that was that came into existence a certain uh, a certain time ago and that too because of external influence not the original vedic uh, system so they they have this understanding that it will be equated and therefore people will think that caste system is in iskon iskon promotes caste system which is totally wrong and this needs to be made very clear iskon is totally under against shila prabhupad never propagated the caste system even when he gave the brahmanas they were the they were supposed to be those people who are the head of that society those who are intellectually strong those who are able to guide the society and this was not at all on the basis of birth 
because as per vedic civilization there is no such thing as a foreign as a person from abroad being a brahmana if if is con believed in caste system this would not be possible right. shri labhropad gave brahmanical initiation to foreigners so this itself shows that he was against the caste system he was for the varnashram system and he said that 50% of his work is incomplete unless the varnashram is established so i would appeal to all the leaders of his con to please take it seriously and fulfill the last and most important desire of shri labhropad